At 10.32 a.m. Eastern Time on January 23rd, or 11.32 local time, the Xichang Satellite Launch Center announced the successful launch of a Long March 3B rocket carrying a highly classified payload known as the Tongxin Zhishu Xiang-14, and I'm probably mispronouncing most of that, but the TJS-14 satellite, which is on its way to geostationary orbit. It's actually geostationary transfer orbit launch, but the objective will be the same in the long run. This satellite will be mainly used for satellite communications, radio, and television, according to the Chinese media, but all previous launches of this particular satellite have also served military purposes. As a matter of fact, the TJS-3 satellite, launched in 2018, released a sub-satellite that later made close approaches to U.S. satellites. Maybe the reason that China didn't talk a whole lot about this launch, but another reason might be because one of the rocket's four strap-on boosters fell back to Earth in a populated area of Shenwan County in Guizhou Province. Security camera footage posted on the social media platform Weibo captured the scene of two family members reacting to an explosion near their home that lit up the night sky. Fortunately, as near as we can tell, but once again, China is not releasing all the details of this accident. The booster exploded on impact in the hills above the house and didn't damage any private property. Again, as near as we can tell. And this is just the latest in a long line of close calls involving the Long March 3B. Why is this the case? Is it because the Long March 3B is an incredibly unreliable rocket? Well, no. It's because of where China chooses to launch the rocket. They launch it from deep inside their own country, just to the southeast of the enormous metropolis of Chongqing. So how is this different than the anomaly that just happened with the SpaceX Starship? Well, admittedly, the Starship did, at least apparently, have some debris fall outside the launch corridor, outside of the region where debris should have fallen in the event of an anomaly. This is something that needs to be investigated, but it's not something that happened by design. Starship should have been traveling exclusively over water, at least during the ascent part of the flight where an anomaly would create a lot of debris. However, it does appear that the size of the explosion or the violence of the re-entry some sort of factor allowed some of the debris to fall outside of this corridor again at least according to reports from Turks and Caicos and other regions inside the Caribbean however when something like this happens with a Chinese rocket that leaves those that are launched from the Xichang launch facility well things are very very different in this 1996 launch that was carrying an Intelsat satellite for the United States at a time when NASA was really having a difficult time getting satellites into orbit and had a terrible launch cadence, which led a lot of American companies to start using China to launch their satellites. Well, this was a catastrophe that, according to the Chinese government, led to seven deaths and over 50 injuries, although many outside observers reported that the death 
death toll was substantially higher. And to make matters worse, the Chinese military, and keep in mind the Chinese National Space Agency is a military organization, unlike the space agencies of just about every other major country on the planet, the military kept American engineers from examining the crash debris, from approaching the crash site, all of these things were barred to American engineers at the time, which led many observers to conclude that China was gathering up the debris post-explosion in order to steal American technology. And given how much Intelsat technology started showing up in Chinese satellites shortly after this accident, it's pretty clear that the Chinese were indeed stealing these secrets at the time. Some even speculated that the Chinese Chinese intentionally crashed the rocket so they could steal the satellite components. Again, I think that's pretty unlikely that they would create such a cataclysm on purpose, especially given the fact that the United States stopped using China after this incident. But still, what I find to be even more revolting is the fact that over 25 years after this incident took place, China is still doing exactly the same things with exactly the same rocket from exactly the same launch facility, completely heedless of the potential danger to their civilian population. And it's not just the explosion either. This is an older rocket and it launches utilizing a fuel comprised of hydrazine and nitrogen tetroxide. These are extremely hazardous chemicals, something that you should never ever approach in the event of a crash. By the way, something you should keep in mind just in case you ever happen to be unfortunate enough to witness a rocket anomaly, never ever approach the debris. And there's something else that frustrates me about this situation. The Chinese have built new spaceports on Hainan Island in South China, which is a sea launch facility. There's no need for them to continue taking such risks. They can go ahead and launch out over the Pacific like just about every every other space launch organization in the world. And by the way, Roscosmos is another exception to this launching from Kazakhstan, which of course is deep inside the Asian continent, but something to keep in mind with that launch facility, there are utterly no civilians anywhere near it. It's a region that is kept reserved exclusively to the Roscosmos Corporation and to its personnel. You can't really compare that launch facility to what China does deep inside their own country. And there's no signs that this is going to be changing anytime soon. Thursday's launch was China's 6th of 2025. Their launch cadence is increasing year after year. The country could launch around 100 times this year, and the Long March 3B will be in action regularly, including launching the Tianwen-2 asteroid sample return mission. A very important and exciting scientific mission that I hope isn't marred by yet another accident and danger to innocent civilians. I'll keep you up to date on new developments. Thank you very much for watching. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. And as always, stay angry about space.